What's going on? Thanks for stopping by. Welcome to Classy Tacos. Today, I sounded so weird, right? Today, we're gonna get into the anytime front and rear camera. Since I did the MISO lower switch panel install last week, that one open spot has been driving me crazy all week. So I said enough, let's get the camera in. Now it's been sitting in my garage for like eight months or something like that. So the newer kits might be a little bit different than what I have, but let me show you what I have and we'll go in through the install. All right, so here's just about everything that comes in the complete kit. Um, this harness goes to your switch and I think this is the bypass. Here's a relay. And this is where you hook up the camera. This is another bypass that plugs into the back of your radio. Um, if you opt to go with their full kit, it does come with a camera. So this would be the front facing camera. It goes here. And then the main reason why I picked this kit over say another kit is I really thought that this switch looked uh, super factory and like super stock. So I like the way that looks and I like that one switch will operate both of the cameras. So you have your front and then it's a flip switch down to the rear. So I like that a lot and I like that it looks factory. Some other uh, kits have two different switches. So I don't like that because it's just going to use some extra spots. Or there's like other kits that tie into your like uh, steering wheel controls. I don't really dig that either. I like to have its own switch. So, perfect. This is everything that you get. And it does look, it is kind of involved, so we'll try to walk through it and we'll see what we can do. There are some instructions here um, on how to hook it up. I want to try my best to get as much of these connections done, you know, before we throw it into the truck. Um, just to start off here, these, so this connects into the back of the switch. Um, these two don't work for me. These two, this is a blue and a gray wire. I don't know if it comes up good on the video there but these two are for 2020 and up only so what i'm gonna end up doing is kind of just putting these up to the side kind of taping them together so we're only going to deal with these wires here all right so now that those are out of the way all the wires kind of make sense so this is i think the video bypass and then this has a red and an orange it's going to go to this red and orange this is a ground the black is the ground and this green goes to the relay green right here and then from the relay there's a black this black is another ground so we have to get these two grounds be nice to get them in together um but you got to be careful because you want to make sure you have enough room to get to your switch. So what I'm going to probably end up doing is giving, getting these two into one spot and then adding, I got some 18 gauge here, adding it, making it a little bit bigger so I can ground it kind of wherever I want inside of the cab. So we're going to jump into that real quick first. So let me just give myself a little bit of room here and some line. You guys can use whatever you want. I have some of these inline connections and then some of this stuff kind of just always kind of have this stuff always lying around. So this is what we're gonna do today. It's my first time using these, so I'm kind of excited. I don't know why I get excited about that type of stuff, but you know, whatever. Uh, let's see, let's get the grounds together. So I'm gonna open that up just a little bit more. There we go. And then the ground from the relay, just gonna open it up a little bit more, maybe a little bit more than that. There we go. And what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna throw these two together like this, so that those two grounds are together. I'm gonna throw this on that over. And if you look, it's kind of cool because it's got a little bit of solder in there too. So when you hit it with a gun, it's going to melt all that too. And then I'm gonna take my black 18 gauge this is just to be able to extend it and throw it in there and make sure that they're both touching they're both touching right there under the solder i just think it's a lot easier to do all of this outside of the truck so that's why i want to do it here on the bench and then you just got to make sure you give yourself enough slack and enough room so I'm gonna let that cool for a sec. While that's cooling, I'm gonna throw 
one of these. I don't have anything. It'd be cool if I had something bigger than this. Because I feel like. Let me see if I got anything bigger than that. Now look. You gotta love how it works out. They either have, you know, tiny. Or this ridiculous size. Like this enormousness. I want to use the enormous one. It's the only one I got that'll. I mean, fit the bolt that's behind the radio. Uh, also, don't have a smaller heat shrink. I thought I did. But it's like everything, every time I need something, I can't ever find it. It's awesome. Throw that into here. Ah, oh, crimper. Awesome. If you want to, a little added bonus. Just throw this up. Ooh, that's still hot. Woo! Toasty. All right, get this out of the way. So now our grounds from our switch and our relay are together and connected. And this is cool, man. I like how the, that melts. It lets you know that it's good. And then, you know, the solder melted in there too. So I feel like that's a really good connection. Got that one done. So up next is going to be from the switch. Now, I feel like on this one, this is long enough to where, and the relay ones, these are long enough to where we don't need to add anything. So what we're gonna do is take the, we'll start with the green. Green from the switch to the green from the relay. So we're just gonna open those up. Just wanna give them a little bit more love there on the end. I had somebody ask me about this tool. It's like from the 70s. It came out of like Grandpappy's toolbox. Uh, I don't even know if they still make these things, but this thing's still been working kicking for me, and I love it. So. so right here, I'm just color matching the wires, trying to take my time, making sure that solder sets in right. So right now, what we're going to go do is plug all of this into the back. Uh, probably find a good spot for the relay, um, good spot for the ground, run the switch through the spot where it needs to be at. So this is sitting outside. Let's go get this mess connected and run through, and then we'll start with the outside camera. I guess that's not a terrible angle, so we'll work with that. All right, so at this point, we're gonna try to get the switch down into this hole here. I don't think it's that bad. Oh, I got it. That was a little easier than I than anticipated. Now, it'd be great if we might. Let's see if we can get it. Oh, yes. And what I, I mean, the connection for the switch is through right here. So all I wanna do now is um, just plug it in with Let's make sure we gotta turn this the right way. I wanna be able to plug it in just so that we don't lose it. So now it's there. I don't wanna throw it into the spot just, just yet. So we're gonna leave it here and we won't lose that. So now that we have the switch through, we're gonna work on some grounds. And if you look, there's a bolt all the way down in there. And you guys can see that right there. That's where, let me see if I can get the camera. That's where I'm gonna attach this ground and put that right up in there. All right, so let me, let me take a second to do that. I'm not gonna be able to film that. All right, so at this point, the ground is attached, uh, relays in the back. We're gonna move over to the front and run our camera wire. All right, so first thing I wanna do once we're out here, this is the actual video kind of cable. Um, I'm just gonna open it up, you got a ton of it. So, I just wanna give yourself enough room so you can get to the camera. I'm gonna run the wire down the side here, underneath the auxiliary panel, and then into, through the grommet. Let me do that real quick and we'll get back to you. All right, so, Back in here, kind of bringing it in. 
What I like to use is a coaxial cable. Um, it's just flexible enough and just hard enough that you can kind of wiggle it and let's see, get through. Perfect. Now, a little trick to this is if you're gonna try to shove the RCA connection through there attached to this, it's a little thick. So if you just tape the wire, get the wire through and then pull just the that RCA connection through. Let's see if I can get it to just come through here. Because even now it's a little tight. You see that? Uh, and it came through. So there we go. And then if you look how I kind of actually did this was, all I did was, See that I just kind of bundled up the wire on it, taped it to it so that only the wire came through, and then you can get this through. All right, so here is kind of the wire running up to the camera. So this is the video feed for it. Um, this is all the extra that I have sitting here. Uh, I zip tied it together right here. I'm going to run it underneath my uh, ox box. So I took these bolts out already. All right, so back in the cab, we have our wire sitting here. We're gonna wire it up and then kind of get it up to that connection up there. All right, so if you look out the side there, what I did was I have my little gripper tool out the side. And what I'm gonna end up doing is grabbing the wire. So I'm gonna pull it up through with the wire. So again, instead of trying to pull through with the largest end, I'm just going to grab the wire and right there, when I got the wire in, I'm going to pull straight through. Easy. So when I pull it up straight through, just nice and easy. It doesn't have to be anything crazy. What we have going on right now, everything in here on the inside is plugged. We just need to install the camera and get the camera powered up. So here I'm just connecting the wires to the aux box. Pretty simple, positive and negative, and that's what's gonna power up my camera. I did clean these up after. This was just for the initial test run. Thank you, Birds. All right, so I did a bunch of searching, trying, moving, taping the camera everywhere, like didn't film it because it was just, this video is already super long, so. From what I can find, this is the best spot. I believe it's not ideal because you kind of still see it. I would want it to be more hidden. But if you have a bumper, your options are basically kind of this entire area here, up and down from here to about the top of the bumper, the bar's in the way. So if you have a bull bar, it's going to get in the way. So then your other options are drilling into the bumper. Uh, I didn't do that. I don't want to because I just feel like if I put the camera in the bumper, it's literally just going to shoot straight down into the ground. Um, and kind of like a small angle too. Uh, right here, it'll give me kind of a wider angle. Uh, this one will be more fun in traffic or driving. Uh, this one will probably be more useful if you're getting into a lot of rocks off road and kind of see them. But I mean, you're just looking at them right here. So I just think having it here is gonna be a little bit more fun while you're driving and see how close you are to people and how you know close you are when you park and stuff like that. So. This is why I'm going to put it here. Also, the easiest spot to put it into it doesn't require, you know, any actual drilling. You're just kind of lining it up between these two places. It's already centered for you. So we're going to get the screw back in there on, wire everything up, and then uh, give it a test run. So just know, though, it will not work like this unless you buy the upgraded camera. Um, the standard camera that comes with the kit has to go vertical. This one's flipped over, so you need the upgraded camera for this. Here is just a quick idea of where it's gonna sit and kind of what it's gonna look like. And we'll see if that changes at all once I get it bolted in. Um, not 100% that I totally love it. So I'm gonna kind of rock it for a little while and then kind of see how I feel about it moving forward. Like one day I'll just be coming out of the store and like an idea will hit me and then maybe I'll move it then. Uh, for now, I'm gonna leave it just like this. Um, give it some time, let it sink in, and then I'll decide if I really just absolutely hate it. We'll change it then. So let's hop inside. I'm pretty sure we gotta cut some wires to uh, flip the video. So let's go figure out what wires we need to cut. 
All right, so for my positioning and where I have the camera, and since I have the premium camera, I ended up cutting the white and the purple wires just so that I could have everything look the way I want it. Let's uh, just hit the front. Kind of seeing right down the driveway there, so that actually doesn't look too bad. It doesn't look like it's too high. I kind of like that. Everything is going the right direction. I will say the updated camera already has a much better quality than the one that comes stock with the kit, so. Nice, I like that. I like how, you see how the bar is just not completely in the way right now, so kind of works perfect. All right, guys, I just want to say right away, the upgraded front camera is way better quality than the one that comes with the kit. So if it was me, I would just go ahead and get the upgraded camera right off the bat. It looks so much better than the standard camera that comes with the kit. So that install took a little bit longer than usual because you know, for me, how it goes, I always got to do more stuff and it's got to get in there right. I'm not 100% with the placement in the front, so I might just let it hang for a little bit until I figure out exactly where I want to get it to go. But until then, it's going to stay like that. I just want to say thanks for watching. Hope you guys enjoy. One more quick look. You guys can see right there. Doesn't look too bad from where it is. All right. Hope you enjoy. You guys stay safe out there. Have a good one.